again. This is Dr. Daniel Gillenwater here at Eastern Oaks Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. And this is your PSA, or Practical Sermon Application, for the week of July 1st, 2012. If you joined us yesterday for worship, or if you had the opportunity of viewing last week's PSA, you know that we are in the middle of a sermon series that we are calling Sundays with the Psalms. And you'll never guess what book of the Bible we're looking at. Okay, maybe you will. We're looking at the book of Psalms. But specifically, we're looking at the different genres or categories found in the book of Psalms. For instance, last week we looked at the hymn or the praise psalm. The hymn is all about praising God. It is a psalm all about praising God because He is a good God. Now yesterday, things got a little more depressing. Yesterday, things got a little sad because we looked at the lament psalm. And the lament psalm is exactly what it sounds like. It is a psalm of lament, of sadness, of sorrow. In fact, we said yesterday that the lament psalm is the country music version of the psalms. You may have heard the old joke, what happens when you play a country song backward? You get your dog back, you get your wife back, you get your truck back. The point being that many country songs are sad, are sorrowful. Well, the lament psalm is also sad. Yesterday we looked at Psalm 13. I'd like to read that for you today. The psalmist says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice, because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Yesterday, while we were talking about the lament psalm and expressing sorrow and expressing sadness, we noticed that there is a transition in Psalm 13. As there is in most of the lament psalms, there is a transition from crying out to God in despair to praising God. And the interesting thing here is that the psalmist doesn't wait to praise God until his problems are over. The psalmist praises God in the midst of his problems. He praises God in the midst of his distress. And how can he do this? Well, he does this because he tells us in verse 5 that he trusts in the steadfast love of the Lord. You see, the great thing is that we serve a God who loves us. God loves you. And no matter what you're going through today, God loves you. And God wants to see you come out of this. Today, you need to trust in the steadfast love of God. Whatever you're going through, whatever trial, whatever difficulty, whatever distressful situation you're experiencing today, I challenge you to trust in the steadfast love of God. And not only do I challenge you to trust in the Lord, but I challenge you to go ahead and start praising Him. Don't wait until your problems are over to praise the Lord. Begin praising the Lord now. That is how we can practically apply the message from yesterday. That's how we can practically apply Psalm 13. Whenever we find ourselves in a distressful situation, we can cry out to God for help, but we can also begin to praise God knowing that help will come. I tell you today, I promise you today, that help is on the way. Go ahead and begin to praise the Lord. Trust in the steadfast love of God. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to talking to you again.